Now, before I start this video off, I just wanna say I hope you stick around to the end because some of your comments that you leave on this video relating to what I wanna talk about at the end could be featured in the next video. So I hope you stick around until the end uh, when I talk about that uh, situation. But for now, let's get into the rest of this video. Hey, what is up everybody? Yes, I returned to your phone, your computer, your TV, your tablet, your laptop. I don't know what you're watching me on right now, but welcome back. It's me, it's Malcolm, and today, today we're gonna have a discussion I wanted to have for a very long time. And I feel like the fact that all these problematic people are starting to come back, some are not addressing things, some are continuing to do what they've been doing. I think it's a good time to like stop and just really kind of analyze why we as a whole group just forgave these people or just kind of like gave them a pass on certain situations. The first thing I want to do and once I get through this list, you're going to be like, wow, that's a lot of people. I actually want to go through an entire list of people in the past year alone that have either been canceled or have been caught up in uh, a few scandals here and there. So here we go. Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, Gabby Hanna, Sanders Kennedy, the Ace Family, Trisha Paytas, Ryland Adams, Tati Westbrook, James Charles, the Lopez brothers, Zoe Laverne, Nikita Dragon, Nikki and Dan Filippi, David Dobrik along with Dirty Dom and Jeff Wittig and the Blog Squad, Jenna Marbles, Morgan Adams, somehow, Madison Beer? I don't know, she's some random TikToker, but she's been canceled too. Nicocado Avocado, Mikey, AKA Glam and Gore, Gabby DeMartino, Olivia Jade, Anna Campbell, so many more YouTubers and countless upon countless TikTokers that I could not care to name or even care to know. They got famous for partying during a pandemic like it was the coolest thing ever, which it wasn't. Now, out of all those people I just named, and all of their problematic past and situations, how many of those people do you think were truly held accountable and actually changed for the better? Don't worry, I'll wait. Now, of course you'd think with all those people I named, you would think someone had to change something, right? Well, actually no, besides Tati Westbrook, and just because she just came back, so like her like redemption or whatever you wanna call it is kind of pending right now until I personally see more from her. Everybody else has actually gotten worse. And the reason why it's gotten worse is because mostly their fan base has enabled them and just, re really forgave their terrible behavior. I randomly had this thought while watching a clip from Anthony Padilla's newest video where he actually got an interview with the YouTube CEO herself, Susan Wachitsky, when they discussed drama channels in particular. I actually do like how Susan acknowledged that she likes to know what's going on with her platform and things that she may have missed and she actually tries to see if there's anything she can do with the YouTube policy where she might be missing something that she thinks she should include or things like that. This also sparked a conversation of if drama channels actually help or hurt the YouTube platform. And my argument for drama channels, and I think a lot of drama slash commentary channels will make the same argument is, if the person they were talking about didn't do anything wrong, they would have nothing to talk about. So, in turn, they did something wrong, they wanna make it known to a lot of people uh, and just hold them accountable for whatever they did. So if you ever are like, 
I wish drama slash commentary channels would stop talking about people. Also, think about it if that person didn't do anything wrong, then the drama slash commentary channels would have nothing to talk about. So, it's kind of like a yin and yang kind of thing. That's why you really never hear anything bad about people like uh, Nikki Tutorials, Lord DIY, Colin Barry, Simply Nessa, Natalia Taylor, and so many more people I wish I could name, but if I really kept this list going, this video would be far too long than I'm like more than I want it to be. So we'll just keep that list there for now. Now, am I saying that the drama slash commentary like community, like everybody's like sparkling clean, like doesn't do anything wrong. Am I saying things like that? Absolutely not. Just like a lot of these YouTube communities, there are some bad apples pretty much in every group. Like I even think the candle community has some drama going on. ASMR community had some drama going on. Like it's not privy to just drama channels and versus like problematic YouTubers. All communities really have like one or two problematic people it just seems like beauty gurus and like top tier youtubers get caught in drama the most because honestly they have the most eyes on them so it's natural to catch them in the most drama the most if that makes sense and I think what matters at the end of the day is that for creators I'm talking to creators right now is that as long as you're responsible for your content and you're presenting whatever you want to present in a responsible and like fair fashion, I really don't see a problem with anything you want to discuss. But as long as you are civil with it and you're not really bullying or harassing anybody, I honestly feel like that's not an issue. Now for context on the point of this video, I wanna talk about two fresh topics in everyone's minds right now. One being the entirety of Shane Dawson's quote unquote absence, except not really uh, since he made that taking accountability video and David Dobrik's sudden return to YouTube. Then a little bit later, I wanna talk about an issue that happened not too long ago that people just seem to magically forgot about, which is the whole Olivia Jade situation. Now I wanna talk about David Dobrik first because that literally just happened. So a lot of people are still talking about it. Now, we won't go over the entirety of David Dobrik's wrongdoings, but the summary of the issue is that he was involved in an incident where not only did he create an environment where certain behaviors were accepted, but he also knew about what Dirty Dom did, and then he tried to act like he distanced himself from Dirty Dom, even though he admitted himself that he created that environment and was responsible not only that his behavior and just the way he talked in vlogs especially when it came to the pranks with seth whom really was the first person this year that seemingly broke the camel's back on how david dobrik really is the vlogs sometimes showcase dangerous behavior that could have been easily and i mean really mean easily imitated so david dobrik released not one but two trash apologies and swore he will work on himself and get better not even three months later, David has gone back to normally posting again, and shockingly, except not really, he hasn't really changed. The vlogs are the same, the jokes are the same, and nothing really changed. But what you see in the comments is where the true heart of the issue is, and pretty much why I'm making this video. Glowing comments about how happy people are that David's back, and how no matter what David does, he like they will never stop supporting him. Some even still coming up with excuses and reasoning why David has done nothing wrong months and months later after the articles basically exposed David Dobrik. Even more surprising were all these big name YouTubers that really just forgot about what David did. Yes, David did lose pretty much all his sponsors, but realistically that the fact that he was still able to post again and be welcomed back with open arms just really shows that accountability it's just a word and nobody truly wants to apply it. Now, we're on to Shane Dawson. Shane Dawson is an interesting topic because after his last video to date, he really hasn't posted on social media much. However, he has been editing Riley Adams podcast to sip along with some of Riley Adams YouTube videos in the meantime. In the most recent video actually on Ryland's 
channel, Shane, Morgan, and Rylan actually threw some fun about being canceled and how drama channels will use a screenshot from the video and the next set of drama videos about him. They even made comments on how drama channels make more money than them, which is true but also not because drama channels upload almost every day while Morgan, Rylan, and Shane probably uploaded once or twice a month in their prime. This is important. And I really do want to stress this. This is important because it addresses one thing I think a lot of people didn't talk about. Shane Dawson and his future family basically admitted that they watch drama videos about themselves. My problem is that I, I feel ugly. I'm, I'm not ready to be on camera. I'm still like, all the drama channels are still using the picture from my last apology video a year ago. <laughs> so they do use the same. <laughs> I get the drama videos, like I get what they're doing because they make a lot of money, I'm sure. Probably more than any of us right now. But you can't even Photoshop a new picture every time. They use the same picture of the same person every time. Like Tana has had the same picture in 47 thumbnails. <laughs> so you see all these videos about yourself and don't make any changes in the entire year. It's interesting, honestly. Like you would think being called out for your past and not fully addressing everything, including being accused of beating Tati Westbrook, information about James Charles, thus fueling the Bi Sister video that not only got James Charles in hot water, but also Tati Westbrook. This feels like the first full video Shane Dawson has been in where he was in the video for extended periods. It wasn't just a quick clip to please fans, but it felt like a usual Ryland Adams vlog. Of course, this pleased Shane Dawson fans to no end where if you looked at the comments, they were all glowing and so happy to see Shane. This was so much to the point where you would think that this wasn't a video on Ryland's channel, but Shane's the way the people were so excited. If you're starting to notice a theme, it'll be very much solidified when I talk about this last person right here. Now, when I say Olivia Jade, it's natural you forgot about what she did but you've seen with the past two people that what i talked about didn't matter people forgave her defended her gave her glowing welcome back that's the real theme not only with these situations but pretty much all of these problematic people and thus giving the true reason in my opinion why people are so forgiving now, for those that forgot, this is just another quick summary of what Olivia J was involved in. She was exposed for her parents paying for a college to accept her and even posing for fake athlete photos of her being a rower so she could be accepted and it looked legit. Obviously, she's not the rowing type and even in a video, she said she only wanted to go to college for the parties, not even the education. For those that don't know what the issue with this is, colleges and universities have a capacity of people they can accept every year. So by Olivia unfairly getting into a school that she wanted, someone else unfortunately had to like be rejected and they probably deserved it more. After being gone from her channel for like almost a year, she came back and pretty much acted like nothing happened. However, unlike the other two people I talked about, a group of people years later are still in her comments telling her to explain herself because they just didn't believe she was clueless in the whole situation like she claimed to be. Of course, there's a majority of people that are like, get over it and move on. Or they're like, well, she explained herself. Why do you keep bringing it up? Now, there is an actual difference between men and women who get caught in scandals and drama. And it's not shocking who gets hit harder in the media. So if you'd like me to go into full detail about that, just let me know in the comments if that's what you'd like to see. By the way, Swoop, another content creator on this platform, actually talked about this briefly in one of her recent videos. So I will actually link that below as well. So here we are. I gave you three kind of different situations where the outcome was pretty much the same for all involved. They pretty much got away scot-free. So people forgave and forget and like magically moved on. Now the point of this whole video, I have watched YouTube pretty much sits with 
it was created in like the 2000s. And I really feel like I know why. Like I really do feel like I know. And you're gonna probably disagree, which is fine. Like you can disagree with me in the comments below, but just hear me out for a second. I really do feel like I, I figured out for me personally why I feel like so many of these problematic people just kind of get forgiven so fast or like people just like don't really care what they did and I, I think I figured it out so it might get a little bit real in a second but I really want you to just listen what I have to say before you really make your own opinion and that's all I'm about over here just I give you the information and then I let you make your own opinion I try not to sway too much I just give what's there so this is why I think that why people like David Dobrik, Shane Dawson, um, even Gabby Hanna just, for some reason, no matter what they do, they won't like get canceled, they won't go away. Like they'll be instantly forgiven. And I think this is why. So the reason why these creators are forgiven so often, in my opinion, is because we love the idea of who they were. What I mean by this is if you watch someone for years and all of a sudden they get caught in something that's actually an issue, you hate the idea that you wasted your time and energy on someone for years and it came up to nothing. You hate this feeling like you wasted your money on merchandise and support for this person that actually turn out to be not what you thought. There's actually a drama channel by the name of Peter Mon, and he actually said something that actually stuck with me and once it clicked in my head, everything made sense. Pretty much he said, if the veil of YouTube was lifted from your eyes and you realize that a lot of these people are smoking mirrors, then you see these YouTubers for who they really are. We as people looked up to all these people and for some, they actually did see comfort in that person. So if that person's character is ruined for someone, then they would feel empty. Most of these fans defend problematic people are those that have been watching for years and love that YouTuber for who they were back then. So they hold on to this image of that person for years to come. So even if they're in some drama, broke the law, said something actually racist, they just can't see the issue with that person because they will have this image of who someone was when they first got exposed to them. And when you wake up and realize you can't support someone, even after being a longtime fan, it does feel empty for a bit. But then you realize that there are some others that you can watch. And in the end, the reason why people defend their favorite YouTubers so hard is because honestly, some people just don't want to look stupid and hope by defending who they like, no matter how bad everything was, they can go back to posting like nothing happened and the illusion they have of that person can stay. Because if they acknowledge how problematic someone is, it makes them legit uncomfortable. Now for some it takes months, maybe years for them to realize giving a problematic person support is actually enabling them to continue that behavior that they were called out for in the first place. So when the majority is so forgiving, it's telling the creator that whatever they did, it's perfectly fine because they'll be forgiven. But what about those that were affected? You can't say racism is bad and then support a creator that hasn't addressed their racist past or behaviors relating to racism. In the end, my personal conclusion is why these YouTubers get away with it so much is because people just can't accept someone they like messed up. They don't want to believe that whomever they idolize messed up so they lie to themselves and just accept the lie that they were shown. They make excuses because the slim chance that that person in whatever scandal gets away with it, they feel validated for liking that person. So that pretty much is what I feel 
in my heart why like you see people like Shane Dawson fans that are like just move on get over it but you also have to think about those that were affected by his actions and things he said just like Jeffree Star and his past as well Tana Mojo um, even David Dobrik who was like who freshly got exposed this year even though people have been calling him out for like years right when you're in that mindset and I used to be a Shane Dawson fan right I've talked about this before so the reason why I'm kind of passionate about this is because I understand I understand what it's like to be a longtime fan and then when you see someone for who they really are and for what it was for me honestly it was the Instagram live where he was just flipping out and I've never seen that side of him before and that really opened up my eyes to like the kind of person he pretty much is because it's not the first time he's had an outburst on camera if you do remember he did like yell at someone on the phone when the launch of that palette was kind of like it was going good but too good so the site crashed and like things weren't going up on time things like that so it's not it's not out of Shane Dawson's character to spaz out and do things like that. The Shane Dawson we were presented with was like, kind of like a teenager, like, oh yeah, mm, yeah, Stan, like things like that. So when you see like two different contrasting things and one is like, it seemed like the angry Shane Dawson was being hidden as well as it could be until it was like a boiling point which was Tati's Breaking My Silence video where she kind of like flipped the blame on Shane Dawson like actually Jeffrey and Shane fe fed me the information which led me to make my sister and of course he did not like that at all and I think that was on the heels of the Welcome to the Circus tweets that Shane Dawson made and yeah so for me, like, I get it if you're, like, a longtime fan and you're still, like, like, you still want to be there because I do see people that are, like, Shane Dawson has got me through so many things. So maybe for some, you feel like you owe him that support. You owe him that love. You owe him your money because he got you through whatever situation he got you through. Like, I get it. But I think, but you also have to step back and like really analyze. Like, okay, I can't support him because I don't support this. Like, what's a good example? Tana Mojo. When she got called out by Colin Barry and simply Nessa last year, I did see a lot of people that were just kind of like excusing what Tana said and did and really downplayed racism so there are some people that will downplay any situation even SA with uh, Gabby Hanna and Jesse Smiles which is also recent so it's it's not really putting it past people to like downplay a situation so they can keep liking who they like you gotta remember we're in a society where people make fan clips or serial killers I think a prime example of that statement would be Charles Manson. And if you don't know who Charles Manson is, I don't know how old you are, but Charles Manson is a notorious, infamous serial killer. And he wasn't the only person that had a fan base, but he actually got married in prison. Like not legally married, but they pretty much said that they were married. So people were in love with this guy and he literally murdered somebody. So it's not really that far out of the realm for like YouTube fans to excuse things like SA, racism, just so they can still like who they wanna like on YouTube. So that video wasn't too, too long. I usually do like longer videos when I take breaks like that. So one, I am sorry that I've been away for a while. I've been working a lot, so I haven't really had time to really sit down and write a script and just talk about things I'm passionate about. Also, if my voice was a little bit raspy, it is like 7 a.m., 8 a.m. on 
the 24th of June. So if I sound a little bit raspy in the audio, I apologize. But now that we're at the end, I actually wanna talk about something I'm working on for my next video. So if you made it this far, good on ya. Thanks for the watch time, by the way. And secondly, I have a question for people in the comments. The next video I'm working on is actually about Shane Dawson. The reason why is because on June 30th is when everything went downhill for Shane Dawson. That's the day of the Instagram Live. That's the day of the Breaking My Silence video. My question to you, and you can write it down below, you can tweet me on Twitter. My socials are actually in my description box always, so leave me a message there if you wanna leave like a fully detailed explanation. But my question to you is this. What would it take for you to go on an Instagram Live or any type of live streaming format type thing to respond to someone calling you out? What would be your breaking point? We obviously saw Shane Dawson's breaking point. As soon, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, um, it's gonna be hard to find where Shane Dawson reacted to because Tati Westbrook deleted the video. It seemed like their breaking point was when Tati said Jeffrey and Shane fed her information, thus leading to the My Sister video and thus leading to um, just calling Jane Charles out for all these disgusting things. So my question to you is what is your breaking point? Like if someone you knew made a video on you out of nowhere, what, you don't have to get too personal. Like what could they say to make you flip out? And my second question is, why do you think Shane Dawson felt like in that moment he had to go on an Instagram live and just pop off like that? Those are the two questions I would like to, you to answer. Leave it in the comments below. Mess with me on Twitter. Instagram, I think it's kind of weird because it'll like send your message to a spam folder and then I have to like accept the message or something. So Twitter's the better place to reach me at. If not, comment section below. And honestly, I have nothing else for you today. Once again, it is Malcolm, that's me. I have a lovely subscription button up here. I also have two other videos over there for your own free time. And yes, this is a Mighty Ducks baseball jersey. Thank you, I love the show. Uh, so once again, it's Malcolm. I'm glad you're here. Um, until next time, I wish you well. I wish you good health. And I will see you again next time.